Good morning, everyone. Paul Duncan with Gamma Edge here. Uh, today is Friday, the 18th of March. TGIF. Let's jump in here. Slightly different presentation from the previous days. Just want to add a little bit of color to what we call the wing charts. These are fully available to everyone within the, uh, the Discord. Basically what you're looking at here is I've constructed the SPX current structure and then the SPX after the next expiration. And you can see uh, this presentation that we call the wing chart or the, the wings here. This is the net cumulative uh, gamma uh, on the put side and the call side. And what we're looking at here is we're looking at a decrease in the call side as we go through an expir uh, expiration. What that typically means for us is that uh, the puts dominate. We're well hedged on the downside. Um, could see a little bit of monetization going on here too. So we'll want to take a look at that and just, just see how that, uh, that plays out. So this is the SPX after uh, uh, the next expiry. We look here at the SPY, it actually is doing the same thing. You can see that we're uh, overall net positive expiry on the SPY, or uh, the gamma condition on the SPY, excuse me. Uh, but after the, uh, the expiry today, we lose a lot of that call structure. Puts begin to dominate, and you can tell that by the magnitude of the, uh, the red wing uh, remaining fairly constant. Uh, whereas the green wing uh, drops a significant amount. For that reason, we're going to color things a little bit yellow. If this trend continues down, uh, there's going to be market pressure, etc. When we take a look at the Qs, kind of the same story, except we're starting in a net negative gamma condition. Fairly strong for the Qs, so technology has just been hammered here. I think that's important to understand, but take a look here what's happening. We've got uh, roughly a growth in the overall uh, call side that continues to develop on the queues. This could be a, a positive thing that's occurring. When we take a look here though on the IWM, the small caps, it's pretty important to understand. We've got a huge shift down here uh, from uh, some fairly large significant values over here, uh, dropping it all the way on down. You can still see net negative gamma here, net negative gamma here. So. Uh, we've got a kind of a rotation going on. We'll want to take a look and, and keep an eye on that. When we take a look at the zero DTE structure, remember the SPX is a cash settled index. And so there's no real pressure for folks to uh, monetize these during the day if they don't want. If they are in the money, they will get rewarded. If they're out of the money, they'll get debited. Um, so it's, it's that simple. Uh, the index ETFs, though, the SPY, the Qs, and the IWM are not in that same boat. They have to uh, be monetized or they're going to get assigned if they're ITM or they're going to expire worthless. And so what we see here is we see pretty heavy call dominance uh, for the expiring SPX and also the expiring SPY. Very, very large. Very, very large. But the Qs and the IWM, not so much. We have a very dominant negative expiry today. This actually could add fuel as these are monetized. It just depends on where we are, and we indicate that with this black dot that you see down here. Same thing with the expiring IWM. We're right up against a wall here, uh, right here at uh, 205 on the IWM. If we're north of that, uh, look for a little bit of monetization. If we're south of that, um, we could potentially drop on down towards the zero and maybe even down to the, uh, the Livermore number of 200. So just keep an eye on this. Typical takeaway when we see monetization of calls, we have downside pressure due to dealer response. When we have puts being monetized, uh, we typically have upside pressure as uh, that, can, uh, that can force the dealers to move the other direction. So again, a rotation, hence we're coloring this yellow. When we take a look at the market model, uh, the upward reversal continues. Yesterday, uh, we saw a continued uh, improvement in the breadth, although it's still net negative, but we're almost ready to uh, call this bullish. We'll just have to see. We need basically this pattern to invert where we've got large green over red. It usually takes a few days. This is a lagging indicator. This is not an instantaneous indicator. The second one is the filtered cumulative tick here. Uh, we had a strong morning up, but the afternoon was relatively flat. Most uh, of the large money that was going in uh, basically was sitting on the sidelines, although we did see a little bit of a push into the, the, uh, the last half hour. 
Uh, down here at circle three, we did get our continuation pattern. We said this yesterday that we need to see a continuation to the upside and we got it. And this was a signal to actually go in. Interesting thing, the SPX falling here was not confirmed by the cumulative tick. This would have been an indicator to get in on this. And so you need to watch for these divergences between the cumulative tick and the SPX or SPY. In this particular case, uh, this, this indicated to us to get in and uh, that there was further upside potential. Um, for today, we need to actually see that continuation pattern. But also note uh, all the slopes on the historical moving averages are in a downtrend for the cumulative tick. And until we can get the instantaneous, this white line above this cyan line and get a, a flip here, we are in a, a long-term downtrend. The ES, relatively flat overnight, relatively unchanged. I note VIX is up a little bit. That, uh, you know, that could be headline risk. It could be a number of things. So just be aware we have dropped off at the 4,400 uh, areas that we were in at the close yesterday. We are lower in that, so I do anticipate a lower open this morning. In terms of the uh, volatility of vol um, and the VIX, uh, note we are pushing south of the minus 2.3 standard deviation in VVIX. That's an important volatility is really coming in. Uh, the VIX is not confirming wholly though, although it did touch the minus one standard deviation. Uh, we're going to have to watch this pretty carefully. I'm actually looking to put some spreads on uh, up in here with a little bit of time thinking that uh, potentially we could have some volatility being introduced into next week. When we take a look at the zero DTE um, in circles one, two, and three here, show you that this is the, uh, the zero DTE for the SPX. One thing to note here, we are in a net positive expiry. When we're in a net positive expiry, the monetization of uh, the, uh, the calls could actually put downward pressure into the overall market. Uh, I know at a very clear transition sitting here at 43.55, 43.60, this actually is also confirmed out in the SPX primary complex, not just the zero DTE. So this is a very strong level that we want to keep an eye on. Um, to the downside, the 4300 is the net negative gamma expiry for today. That's uh, that's interesting because here at square five, we're actually seeing uh, the net positive COI, the map, the major call open interest that is expiring today is well below. So everything here in the blue box is in the money. And so there could be some pressure here uh, to the downside as we see monetization. If we get any sense that price is gonna fall today, we could see this monetization of these calls. When that occurs, uh, typically look for downside pressure. Uh, when we take a look at the expiration, um, note most of the, uh, the SPX complex, you just saw that uh, there's 11 thousand uh, net gex coming off today so basically that's a that's the end of the day in relation to next week um, still more positive gamma expiry uh, when we see this we typically have a little bit uh, of uh, when we're in a net negative gamma condition which we're in mixed conditions right now uh, we typically see volatility so watch for some volatility into next week uh, net positive expiries on monday wednesday friday looming out here is the jpm hedge on 331 and you can see that is uh, a very major net negative as they roll that out to the end of the next quarter uh, different slide than we normally uh, produce here wanted to show you a couple things of kind of where are we so here's 4400 ma major uh, positive gamma here you can see this transition that i was talking about earlier on the expiry this is actually for the entire spx complex fairly important 4355 4360 watch for us to potentially flip around in this area you can see there's also a smaller area up here around 4380 uh, or so um, look at all the uh, net negative gamma that's well above our current price. Um, this is fairly interesting. Uh, we're going to want to watch this. And then, of course, we've got the JPM uh, long puts here. We'll have to, uh, to keep an eye on that. And that's uh, the expiry for 331. Uh, when we take a look at the overall SPX, uh, a lot of questions came in. Are we in positive gamma? No, we are not. Um, we are close, no question. We've certainly been improving, but we are still in a net negative gamma condition. Uh, 
I will note here at square six, we've got a lot of positive delta that has been building. We actually, it has built from yesterday also. Uh, we were at 43.65 as the top of this transition on deltas, and you can see now we've pushed north to uh, 44.10. This is bullish. When we see deltas coming in, that's, uh, that's always a good sign. And you can see some pretty significant levels that, uh, that exist out there. The JPM hedge is up here at circle three. We're going to probably open below this uh, circle four. There's a major level, as you just saw here at 4,400, uh, which uh, for all intents and purposes yesterday uh, uh, as a last day of expiry for the SPX or trading day for uh, the SPX uh, mothership uh, was, a, was a big, big level. And now we're going to open most likely below that into this range. And we'll have to watch this uh, 4355, 4360 uh, range, which is a transition. And as, a, as I said, there's a 4380 transition that's out there. To the downside, looking at the 4300, there's not a lot of strong net negative gamma uh, to the downside. So that 4300 is going to be a, a fairly significant number in terms of deltas as well as gamma exposure. And we'll have to watch what we have there. Over 279,000 uh, puts are sitting down there right now. So it'll be interesting to watch what, uh, what happens there. So that's it for today. Um, if you're interested in the details here, uh, join us at www.gamedge.us. Uh, it'll take you to a Discord sign-up page uh, that'll allow you access. 14-day free trial, everything turned on. Come in, kick the tires, meet the crew. Uh, we've got a lot of, lot of great traders uh, who are all learning how to apply this to their, uh, their individual styles of uh, trading. And uh, of course, Follow us on uh, Twitter at Gamma Edges with an S. And of course, also, you're watching this off of YouTube. Please follow us here so you get notified when we post updates and like us so that we can move higher in the search engines. Make it a great Friday, everyone. Thanks.